It is a great privilege, as usual, as always, to be with you this morning. Uh, as we move forward in Luke 13, uh, I, I hope that you've noticed and enjoyed, as I have, just the jam-packed uh, teaching here in Luke 13. Uh, really challenging, really important. Uh, today, Jesus is going to use a, uh, 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 an object lesson, a teaching for us, and he's really going to challenge uh, the our expectations of both the readers in the first century and I think for us today. So Luke 13 verses 18 to 21. Uh, open yourselves up today and let your expectations and norms uh, be challenged by what Jesus has to say. Continuing right where we left off with the healing of the daughter uh, of Abraham yesterday, Luke writes, He said, therefore, what is the kingdom of God like? And what can I compare it to? It's like a mustard seed that a man took and sowed in his garden. It grew and became a tree, and the birds of the sky nested in its branches. Again, he said, what can I compare the kingdom of God to? It's like leaven that a woman took and mixed into 50 pounds of flour until all of it was leavened. So familiar examples that we're used to hearing of Jesus talking about the kingdom of God being like a mustard seed and like leaven. But, but, but what is he really teaching us here? He's challenging the expectation of those in the first century, right? What are they expecting from a Messiah? What are they expecting from God? What are they expecting to bring salvation? They're expecting somebody who's strong and powerful with an army and with authority and with glory and with military force to take over the, the Romans who were oppressing them, to, to elevate Jerusalem to, the, to the, the, the shining capital that was once before. But how does the Messiah come? As a poor carpenter's son, born to a virgin in a little backwater town, placed in a manger with no fanfare, no uh, royal welcome, nothing but shepherds to celebrate his birth. What is this? unexpecting Messiah tell us his kingdom will be like. First, like a mustard seed, a tiny, tiny little seed. But what happens when it's planted? It starts small. It's unassuming and unexpecting, but it grows and grows and grows and provides security for all those around it. Like a mustard seed that a man took and sowed in his garden, it grew and became a tree, and the birds of the sky nested in its branches. Jesus is telling us that the kingdom of God is, starts with something small and grows to something powerful. Doesn't show up big, doesn't show up strong, doesn't show up with a lot of followers, but grows and grows and grows and provides protection and support and a home for so many people. He also uses the example of leaven. Now we've seen him use leaven uh, talking about the, the Pharisees, but, but the leaven is not what's evil. It's just the way the Pharisees work. But the kingdom of God works in the same way. Look at verse 20. What can I compare the kingdom of God to? It is like leaven that a woman took and mixed into a 50, pa 50 pounds of flour until all of it was leavened. Now, I don't know if you've ever uh, b found a 50-pound bag of flour. I've never even seen one that big. But that's a lot of flour, right? It's a, it's a massive amount. Uh, I mean, even just, just far more than we would even think to have unless we're oh, running a bakery or something like that, right? This is a massive amount. And what does he say? A little tiny bit can leaven the whole batch. You see, the kingdom of God doesn't have to have anybody strong, important, influential, or powerful. The kingdom of God starts with one person or a few people. And as it's mixed up, as time goes on, as the leaven spreads, it grows and grows and grows. Not only does the kingdom of God grow from a tiny seed to a powerful tree, but the kingdom of God spreads in, in really miraculous and exponential ways. When we allow Jesus to work through us, we get to be a part of that leaven, that, that unassuming small amount of leaven that does incredible work in this world. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Let's not let our expectations of how God should work or how God should use us hinder us from being a part of his work for his kingdom. Let's be patient. Let's be faithful. And let's let the kingdom work in and through us to be something strong and to spread and spread. I mean, really, we could describe leaven as infecting the whole basket, but infecting in a good way. Let's let the kingdom of God in our lives mix in and intermingle with others and the flower around us. And the world will be changed radically. I remember in the book of Acts, I can't remember the reference and I can't remember what city Paul was in. But I don't know if you recall the accusation at one point, one city that they went to. They're accused, the Christians are accused of turning the world upside down. Let's let the kingdom of God work through us and in us so that we can be a part of seeing the world turned upside down. The kingdom of God does not work like we expect or like we would even do it ourselves. The kingdom of God works powerfully and mightily through individuals empowered by the Holy Spirit, trusting in a Savior. Father, we thank you for today. What an incredible privilege. What an incredible honor to be with you, to open your word. Let us be used by you. Let us be that mustard seed that grows. Let us be that leaven that spreads into the world around us. Let us be a part of your growing kingdom. Let us trust you and be faithful to let your power work in ways that only you can. In Jesus' name, amen. So good to be with you. Don't forget, ladies, tonight is the Ladies Bible Study at 6.30 here at the church or on Zoom. If you need that link and you don't have it or you don't get it later, let me know. I'll make sure you get it. I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow. Ladies, I know that you're going to have a great time tonight. Have a blessed rest of the day. I love you. Bye.